in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for this great opportunity. I want to say a word or two whilst we're standing before we sit the last time I was here um, truly was about a year ago and um, I want to say a very big well done to first the church and then the pastors for the strength the resilience the stamina hallelujah we had a word or two before we came in here and I was commending Pastor Jimmy my first time meeting him and his dear sister Pastor Tolu we've met a couple of times and um, there are many people who will take years to heal recover be strengthened and then re-strategize for the work ahead but it's incredible what the Holy Spirit has done in their lives and through their lives and the Bible says that those who rule well should be counted for double honor. And so please help me appreciate the pastors of this great church extending the legacy of Pastor Taiwo. And then I also, I also want to truly appreciate and honor the membership of this great church. You see, your presence, your remaining is proof you truly loved Pastor Taiwo. I will say it again. Your presence, your participation, your remaining, your prayers, your givings, your support is proof that you truly loved Pastor Taiwo. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to honor um, Pastor Shola, a dear friend and brother. Thank you so much, sir. And all the great, incredible speakers, I can only imagine how the sessions have been. And I trust and pray that God will do us good tonight. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So may I please request that we lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord for an encounter tonight. The Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receive it. Go ahead and pray. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Faithful, faithful is the Lamb. Faithful, faithful is the Lamb. Faithful, faithful is the Lamb that was slain. Praise Him, hallelujah. Praise Him, hallelujah. Praise Him, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we bless you and we thank you. We honor you and we worship you. Thank you for this great church. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for your precious people gathered here on site and the many who are following online. We thank you for your wisdom. The Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and even understanding unto the simple. I pray that you speak to our hearts tonight. And whilst you speak, let the sick be healed. 
whilst you speak let the oppressed be delivered whilst you speak let the downcast find hope redirect the causes of our destinies and move us forward to you be all the glory and all the praise for in jesus matchless name we have prayed please give jesus a big hand clap and you may be seated hallelujah god's method has always been and will always be his word his method to lift is by his word his method to bless is by his word his method to change a man's level is by his word his method to restore is by his word hallelujah i would always liken the word of god to a tray a serving tray when you order a meal usually it comes in a tray and once you see the tray coming the tray is not what you will eat but you rejoice because on that tray am i right on that and so as this tray comes for someone it comes with healing for someone it comes with restoration for someone it comes with lifting for someone it comes with illumination in the name of jesus the second thing i want us to note very quickly as we delve into our discussion for tonight is that revelations create transitions yes when god wants to move you revelation is like a vehicle it stops you from remaining at the same position the moment the light of god comes to you the revealed word once it comes to you it sustains the ability to transition you to a new realm a new dimension a new horizon hallelujah the bible says in ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 it said son of man stand up upon your feet and i will speak unto you and he had no strength to arise from that position verse 2 says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet hallelujah someone by the light of god's word that is coming upon you you are rising from that level amen. say a believing amen. amen you are rising from that position in the name of jesus for someone after this meeting you will look at your former self and you will not find it again amen. you will so transition you will be a marvel a sign and a wonder to yourself in the name of jesus christ now I'm sharing a few things along the lines of your theme and I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will grant us understanding. Amen, amen and amen. When God calls a people, every time God wants to make a praise out of a people, he first calls them. Doesn't matter where he finds them. He calls them. That is the most important thing. He will find some like the prodigal son, lost. He will find some like the nation of Israel in Egypt, in bondage and captivity. It doesn't matter where he finds them. The most important thing is that the moment God calls you, it means you're ready to live where you are, to the place of prophecy and to the place of destiny. But when he calls men in order of spiritual priority, he does not call you to an assignment. He calls you to himself hallelujah out of your relationship with him a mandate is born are we together now the mandate is not without an encounter with the god of the bible in colossians chapter 4 and verse 17 he says say unto archippus that the ministry which thou hast received in the lord not from the lord in the lord it says that thou be faithful towards it paraphrasing so he's saying that when god calls men he called the disciples to be with him and then that he might send them so the protocol of how god leads people and grants them the mandate to be witnesses is that he finds them wherever he finds them he calls them to himself and then out of the abundance of that fellowship that encounter and the growth that comes from that encounter he now sends them to represent him it's important that we understand this because if you ever assume any task or any responsibility in this kingdom 
without an encounter with the one who sent you, you will fail. There is something only his presence can give men that becomes the reason why they succeed. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it says to lean not on to your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Are we still together? So Moses began to pray. I hope you know that the nation of Israel were historically warriors. Even though they had been locked up in captivity for a period of 430 years, here's Moses now. Moses brought them out of Egypt, uh, you know, to a land flowing with milk and honey. And whilst on that journey, Moses made a request and said, Lord, do not let us depart from here. We have every other thing. We left with gold. We left with riches. We left with supplies. But all those things stand useless if your presence does not go with us. So when God calls a people, he calls them to himself. And then out of the abundance of what his presence does to them, he can send them fearlessly to the nations. It's important we have this. The second thing, that I may want to point out if you're writing is that God's desire and please I want you to listen to this God's desire for you and I God's desire for every believer is that we eventually become a manifestation of the glory of God in experience please I want you to listen God's goal is not just to take us to heaven else there would be no need for teaching there would be no need for church there would be no need for the fivefold ministry. God's goal was not just to save us from sin, it was part of the program. That ultimately, his desire for you and I is that in and through our lives, please listen, that we eventually become a manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Is the Hebrew word kabod, the Greek is doxa. It means the weightiness of a thing. When you talk about the glory of a thing, you have to probe into the features of that thing. Why is it expensive? Why is it rare? Why is it desirable? So the glory of an electronic gadget is in the dexterity of its features, whether speed, whether accessibility. Are we together now? Yes. When you talk about the glory of God, you're talking about everything that makes God God, his wisdom, his favor, his power. So I'm saying that God's intent for you and I is that eventually, may not be immediately, eventually, that my life and your life becomes a holistic capture of the glory of God. That men can learn God as they look at your life. Your life becomes a living epistle. And if your life fails to achieve that in your lifetime, Listen carefully. It does not matter whether you succeed career-wise. It does not matter whether you succeed in your vocation. You would have failed to represent God effectively to your generation. So God's goal is that eventually my life and your life that we become manifestations of the glory of God. If you believe that, shout aloud, loud, Amen. The meaning of that is that your results matter to God. Um, it's important, you cannot discuss the subject of being a sign and a wonder or an extraordinary believer if you do not come to a personal appreciation of the value of results. You need to know that results benefit more than the one producing it. The name of the Lord is at stake as far as the world of men is concerned. And your result was designed to be the system that brings credibility and honor to the name of the Lord. John chapter 15 and verse 8. The Bible says, herein is our Father glorified. Are we still together? It says, when ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. You justify the investment of the heavenly resources over your destiny when you produce results. Same John 15 and verse 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. Are we Bible students? It says, and that your fruit should remain. Longevity of impact, lasting. 
your fruit should remain in Matthew chapter 5 Jesus was teaching in what we know theologically as the Beatitudes when we get to verse 13 he begins a very interesting discussion he says ye are the salt of the earth and the assignment of salt is twofold to preserve and to add taste or value he says you are the salt of the earth then he says but if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savour, he says wherewith shall it be salted again it is good for nothing except to be trodden thrown down and trodden under foot of men then he says you are the light of the world you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel he says but that it is put on the lampstand the candlestick and it gives light to everyone in the room verse 16 now says let your light so shine the word let means permit allow do not restrain allow your light to so shine not before angels not before spirit to so shine someone say so shine prophesy say so shine your light to shine to a level where it becomes impossible to be ignored and he says by so doing you glorify your father Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship the workmanship of a man is an expression of his intelligence and creativity we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto 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 this is the intent unto good works which God had preordained I like the word preordained meaning he's not scratching his head wondering what to make out of my life it's a preordination there is a dimension of glory he's already a mat for the saints to step into are you understanding me so far Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 it says to the intent Paul speaking that now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the ecclesia the manifold multifaceted wisdom of God that means eventually the world should stand in awe when they look at a believer a believer should be an object of wonder a believer should be an object of praise you should import a level of reality that is not easily affordable in the world of men they would know that it takes God to produce this kind of result. there are things that are possible with men but there are certain possibilities that implicate you immediately it shows that you must have partnership with a spirit Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night John chapter 3 from verse 1 he says rabbi we know that thou art a teacher sent from God for no man can do these miracles which thou doest except there are results men cannot produce unassisted it is impossible the creativity the intelligence the power the wisdom of men cannot stretch them so far if you see an ordinary man produce that result it tells you that he's been assisted by God the meaning of all this is that from today your life ceases to be ordinary in the name of Jesus Christ that in every area of calling profession vocation you will import a level of excellence that is not ordinary you will import a level of wisdom and creativity that your life will be verses on the open people will look at you and learn God in a way they have never known you believe that shout amen so God desires that our lives capture results results that bring glory to the name of the Lord the third point I want you to take note of I wrote here that every believer in Christ now listen what I said before now is the reason why I'm about to say a very profound statement that the empowerment of the believer is God's commitment to help achieve the goal I just explained the value of spiritual empowerment is to this end that believers be fruitful are we together that believers produce that believers advance that believers become objects of praise that while serving the purposes of the kingdom your life does not fail to capture and reveal the glory of God it is in support of that agenda that the subject of empowerment 
becomes necessary. I made it, I wrote something here and I want you to listen. Every believer in Christ, I said, has access to the empowerment of the Spirit to make you an effective witness. But you see, access does not equal possession. Our discussion begins now. Every believer in Christ, the moment you confess the Lordship of Jesus over your life, according to Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, according to John 3, 16, are we together now? The moment you confess the Lordship in order of spiritual priority, this is the first port of call. That in your pursuit to becoming like God, living a life of excellence and beauty and glory, it is important you follow the protocol. The protocol number one is an encounter with the Son of God, Jesus. You can encounter a man of God, you can encounter religion, you can encounter a church. None of them in themselves can impart eternal life. The Bible says this is the record that God had given us eternal life. But he structured eternal life such that you must encounter the son to have that life. He says, he that does not have the son does not have life. Do we agree? Yes. So when you receive the son, it's important for you to know that there are dimensions beyond that initial salvation experience. Leading to empowerment. The empowerment of the spirit is vital and is necessary to the ex for the excelling of the saints. If you are not empowered, you will live an ineffective life. Ineffective in every sense and in every ramification. Now, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18 makes a very profound statement. Um, okay, beautiful. I want us to read it together if you see it projected. Ready? One to read. Uh huh. Thank you. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me. Your child there does not just mean a biological person. Anything that comes out of you is your child. Your business is your child. Your vision is your child. It says, I and the children that the Lord has given me. I and the business that the Lord has given me. I and the school that the Lord has given me. I and the church that the Lord has given me. Everything around you, he says, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Signs and for wonders in Lagos, in Nigeria, in Africa. Are we together now? I and the children that the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. The Bible tells us in Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Zechariah 8 and verse 23. Please give it to us so that I'll tie up a few things. Zechariah 8 and verse 23. My goodness. Profound scripture. Let's know when you find it, media. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Let me pull it up here very quickly. Beautiful. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days, someone said, These are the days. In those days it shall come to pass, uh huh, that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, a covenant person, saying, we will go with you. We will go with you for we have heard. This is why we will go with you. We have heard that God is with you. We have seen the results from your business. We have seen the results from your life. It is clear, unmistakably clear that God is with you. The Bible says they will come. Reminds me of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, arise, amplified, says from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. 
Arise, shine, it says, for your light is come. And the glory, there you have it again. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, for darkness shall cover the earth. Is the expression to who are bohu confusion and chaos and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of god shall arise i like verse 3 my god i receive it as a prophecy for myself that gentiles shall come to your light gentiles he never said they will come to you no gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to your light their kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to your light they won't ask you where you are coming from mm -mm. Mm -mm. provided you carry that light the world is too dark for light bearers to be ignored no are we together? But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my hand. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my hand. I like that part. You're my glory. The lifter up of my head. Someone prophesied. You're my glory. The lifter up of my head. It doesn't matter what the devil does. You're my glory. The lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Let me give you three keys tonight, very quickly, within the time that I have. I came to share with you three keys that can cause any man. To become inexperienced, a sign and a wonder. Not just to produce signs and wonders, but to become a personification of this realm and this reality, a sign and a wonder. That your life becomes a fulfillment of prophecy. When people see you, they remember everything God has said because your life becomes, they can see verses being fulfilled in your life. When they look at your life, they can see Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. They look at your life and you are like a well-watered garden. Your life becomes an explanation of the faithfulness of God. The grace of God made manifest. Do you believe that? Please, I want you to lend me your attention for the next few minutes. Because you see, I told you that according to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible says that the God of our Father had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. 1, 3. Ephesians 1, 3. Had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. These are prophetic realities finished in Christ. But you see, the new birth gives the believer access, not just experience, access. Access does not equal possession. Access means that the, the possibility for possession has been created. Are we together now? If I gave you a check of a million naira, um, it is safe to begin negotiations with that check if you trust me. But... If the person needs cash, there is a technology that has to convert that check to cash. Are we together? So you can hold a check like a piece of paper and yet you will be surprised that you will not be able to do much with it. If you say, I am a million naira richer, you are not lying. But your lack, your inability to cash that check will eventually make you look like a liar. So I can't call you a liar because I see a check on your hand. But you are not able to make any purchases with it necessarily. You see that now. So access does not equal possession. There are many believers in the body of Christ bragging over access. And that is not wrong except that there has to be a technology of conversion to turn access to possession. The Bible says the word became flesh. The word became flesh. There was a conversion process. It became flesh. Then it dwelt among us as flesh. Then the Bible says we beheld. We beheld. 
the word became flesh the business was made manifest the favor was made manifest for as long as we keep claiming things that never find expression in our world we mock ourselves and our convictions the Christian experience was never supposed to just be believed arbitrarily you start by believing but you can taste and see that the Lord is good there is an experience are we together now the Bible says in Acts chapter 8 I hope we're still together Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 it says Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto them and that the people gave heed with one accord listening intently to the things that Philip spake why because they heard hearing and seeing the miracles which he did he did not just carry grammar or language when he said God lifts they saw that God lifts when he said God restore, it's important for people to see what you are saying God can do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. Key number one, for every believer who means business with God, business with destiny, and you intend to become a manifestation of this prophetic word, that nations, men, all and sundry will call you a sign and a wonder. The first key is that you must have an experience with the God of the Bible. Now, don't assume you understand what I just said. Please follow carefully. You must have an experience with the God of the Bible. I would always make reference to a statement that I heard and I learned years ago the God you know is the God you reveal to your world you cannot reveal a lifting God when you have not encountered him as a lifting God the God you know the one you meet is the one you reveal to your world I hope you know that the God of Abraham is still the God of Isaac is still the God of Jacob but his revelation according to these names is not the same. No. There is what the God of Abraham alone can do that the revelation of him as the God of Isaac will not do. What Jairah would do is not what Rapha will do, although it is the same God. Are we together now? Yes. So the God that you encounter is the one you reveal to your world. If your revelation of God is weak and impotent, it is because your encounter is the same, weak and impotent. Moses said, who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? I cannot go and stand before Pharaoh and advocate an exodus just blindly. Let my people go. Pharaoh will say, what is the meaning of that? Where was that God for 430 years while these people were in captivity? And Moses said, the issue is not the captivity. The issue is not Pharaoh. The issue is not your people. The issue is me and you. Who shall I tell them has sent me? I assure you that life and destiny will ask you this question. Who sent you? Who sent you that you want to build the biggest business across Africa? By what audacity do you know the controlling spirits that have tied and destroyed lives? Who sent you? Life will ask you. Who sent you that you intend to be the first person from your family to rise and lift up the name of Jesus Christ? Who sent you? The God you know is the one you reveal to your world. Knowing another man's God is a good starting point, but you must get to a point where he becomes your God. Paul said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded Is someone learning your conviction in this kingdom is a product of the depth of your encounter please listen believers many times believers do not take time to know God they just brush over and the next thing they jump to principles wanting to succeed wanting to excel it does not happen that way no time invested in knowing God is a waste no time if you have 10 days for exploits and you use nine days to know God, you were not foolish. Because the Bible says, Daniel 11 and verse 32, but the people 
he never said but everyone the people that do know their God they shall be capacity number two they shall do exploits not talk exploits not explain exploits the people that do know their God the people that do know the lifter the people that do know the restorer the people that do know the helper you are strengthened in the place of encounters the reason why we fall off when things happen around our lives good or bad is because our encounters are not deep enough to keep us strong and so we ask God all kinds of questions there's something you know about God that you laugh at failure as it laughs at you until it leaves you will worry failure through your confidence and it will leave because there is something you know about God for instance the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of is that in your Bible did you ever read in your Bible that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side but that none will hurt you with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked is it in your Bible that I lay me down and I slept some three it says I wait for the Lord sustain me who sustains men the Lord do you believe this about God you see your confidence and your audacity in life I'm not talking of bragging I'm not talking of pride I'm talking of confidence that is built on account of the God you have met let me tell you this life has a very nasty way of bullying men did you hear what I said it will use the reference of your background to bully you Satan will move through systems and structures and probe you you think you can become anything you ask Gideon why he was hiding life for you life can bully a warrior to hide but when he came he called him by his destiny you are a mighty man or fellow I wonder how many mighty men have been in hiding because they have not met a mighty God when you meet a mighty God you cannot be a weak man because the Bible says as we behold him we are changed not into what we want into what we are beholding is someone learning now you need an encounter with God you are a man of God here you need an encounter with God a businessman an encounter with God God has called you to be a witness advancing the purposes of the kingdom I tell you life will bully you into mediocrity if you do not know God men will look at you and say you do not add up you can't be the director in that company by what parameters ah. when Saul looked at David he said David I love you you're a little boy I I love you too much to allow you die a miserable death in front of Goliath and David said King you are a warrior I'm a teenager but let me tell you a story you do not know about me once upon a time whilst I was in the wilderness no Instagram no Facebook no one to snap me and let the world see while I was in that wilderness listen carefully a lion came there was no help so I learned how to depend on God a bear came there was no you I I learned from the wilderness the vanity of the help of men without God and I tore it with my bare hands in other words King you are a warrior do men have the ability to tear animals by their own strength but not when the spirit of might comes on a man he said it is that audacity that sponsors my confidence allow me to take care of Goliath and Saul now carried his armory you see what God trains you with is what you will use in battle if God trained you with prayer don't use another tool if God trained you with scripture don't use another tool are we together now if God trained you with wisdom pay attention to the tools that are used during your training process that is what will bring Goliath nothing wrong with the armory of Saul 
There are many believers after many years of investment with the spirit, the world now begins to tell you, drop your tools. No, prayer, drop that prayer, it doesn't make sense. Drop fasting, it doesn't make sense. Drop the word, it doesn't make sense. Wisdom, oh no, relationships, not exactly. Drop them. And before you know it, you are in battle with tools you were not trained to use. Are we learning? Yeah. And David returned it to Saul and said, I will use what he trained me with. Yeah. When he stood before Goliath, yeah. Goliath said, Am I a dog? Israel, you bring this little boy, I will kill him. Killing him is not the issue, it's how I would do it. I mean, you want me to give you a very bad memory? I mean, am I a dog? And David kept quiet. Silence is not fear. Silence is not fear. Let me tell you the truth. When mighty men are silent, it is wisdom walking. Ask Jesus. When they met Jesus and brought a woman who was caught in adultery, you would think because sometimes knowledge without wisdom makes you talk yourself even to failure. Silence. And he wrote on the ground. Maybe that's what Adam and Eve would have done if they were a little silent. The Bible says even a fool when he's silent is regarded. Silence can create perception. And he writes down. <laughs> and then he says, he who is without sin should cast the first stone. And that was the end of it. So David stands before Goliath and says, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? You come to me with your bows. You come to me with your spears. But I come to you in a name. There is a God that I met in the wilderness. He's a warrior too. He trains men to fight. He says, by you, I will run through a troop. And by my God, I will leap over a wall. No, you don't have that capacity to leap over a wall. You try that, you'll go to the hospital. But not when God is holding your hands. I'm saying this to someone. Listen, I want you to believe what you are hearing me say. God can help men. Did you hear what I said? God can help men. He can help ordinary men to be extraordinary. I'm telling you, God can help men. Woe betides the man who stands the way of a man God is helping. God can help men. God can help men. Maybe this is a prophetic word for someone. You have done everything in your own strength. Intellectual strength. Financial strength. Let me tell you the truth. God can help men. And help has two assignments. To make things possible and to make things easy. When God comes to help you, the intent behind his providing help is to make things possible and then to make things easy. Hallelujah. An encounter with God. Great men in the kingdom are made on the strength of their encounters with the God of the Bible. I can share with you stories stories in my own life and I'm grateful to God for the honor of the many encounters he's given me. When I talk of encounters, I'm not limiting it to supernatural visionary encounters. The Lord appeared unto Samuel in Shiloh by his word. God can appear to men by his word, giving light even from scripture. It doesn't always have to be a visionary out of body encounter. Not everybody may have the privilege of meeting Jesus as a person, encountering angels. No, 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 no. But once you can encounter his word, his word, not just the letter, the spirit behind it. You can read every day, fear not, but the daylight comes from that scripture. You see that? It comes with a grace that empowers you to fear not. That what would have made you afraid will no longer make you afraid because light has come from scripture. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Spend time 
to know God by his word. Don't be ignorant if you want to excel in life and destiny. The God that you know, the truths that you know, that is what will give you confidence, is what will give you audacity. Many years ago, I read a few things in scripture. And looking from hindsight now, sometimes I'm tempted to laugh at myself. But I was foolish enough to believe God. And I was foolish enough to believe them. There is nothing God has said concerning my life that I do not believe. Because every time you believe, he gives you power to become. As many as believed him, he gave them. There is a gift that follows believing. It's called the power to become. Say it after me. The power to become. One more time. The power to become what you have believed is given after you believe, not before. The power to become. You believe that God lifts you. The power to be lifted is released. You believe that God is your salvation. The power to become happens when you can believe him enough. Hallelujah. You need an encounter with the God of the Bible. You need an encounter. God is calling you to ministry here. Don't rush to go and print handbills and posters. No. Know the God of the Bible. Infirmities and sicknesses and curses and yokes that are upon the people you are sent to. The spirits behind them will ask you who sent you. It's a question if you cannot answer, you will remain defeated forever. Do you believe that? How about the business world? You may say, I'm not called into the fivefold ministry. My God, you need the revelation of God more in business, in fact, in my opinion. Because the king of Tyre, there is a spirit that sits upon that marketplace. Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Yeah. Because he knows what the wealth of the kingdom can do in the hands of people who love Jesus. You may have heard me say in my teachings that the name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Are we together? And so he comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy. But the people that do know their God, the people that do know their God, the preachers that do know their God, the businessmen that do know their God, fountain of life, if you do know your God, the Bible says you shall be strong capacity strength inner strength emotional strength intellectual strength and then it says you shall do exploits do exploits everything that brings glory to the name of the lord becomes your business do exploits testimonies from your life men will look at you and you do not add up but that becomes their concern you see that as for you you will keep leaping by the spirit and one day you look at yourself and say, what is my business doing in 15 nations of the earth? How did I start? And when people come to ask you, you say, well, I cannot boast of knowing any, everything. But the one thing I do know <laughs> is that when God holds your hand, I'm praying that you're believing what I'm telling you. My sister, God can hold your hand and transition you from a level of suffering and mediocrity. God can hold the hands of a preacher. God can hold the hand of an ordinary family for want of expression. And every time you see people extraordinary in the kingdom, let me tell you it is because God has helped them. And that help comes when you encounter the God of the Bible. I look at my life today and with all humility sometimes I'm not a very emotional person I've tried and tried to be it just didn't work and I told myself there's there's no point I'm sure one day to come on his own but there are a few times I cry and that is when I reflect on what is made out of my life I look at my life and sometimes I say only a fool says God does not help men. Honestly. There are things that God does in your life 
that you are the first person to be shocked before those who hear he says when the Lord turn again the captivity am I prophesying or I'm just speaking when the Lord turn again that captivity owing in business failing in destiny trusting God for the fruit of the womb in the midst of mockers and naysayers but when God comes <laughs> and just picks you sometimes it can be overnight let me stand by the grace of God and speak over someone that by the power that raised Christ from the dead if you have the faith to believe this everything that has left you in shame reproach caused you to cry personally corporately I call upon my God who is also your God come out of that situation now come out of that situation now come out of that financial situation come out of that health situation come out of that business situation come out of that career situation in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated can I sing a song for you I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified receive manifest his power and his wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted receive manifest your power and your wisdom lord till the nations see jesus lifted up glorify breathe lord Breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. It's a prayer tonight. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. That something from heaven will rest upon your destiny. The nations see Jesus till the nations see Jesus till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorify listen to me I'm singing it for you but it's your life and your results that will do the singing the kind of results that will begin to flow from your life and I'm speaking this upon you and in this church you will begin to see extraordinary manifestations manifestations of power manifestations of wisdom that ordinary people will walk into this church and encounter Ebenezer the God that lifts men the God that helps men the God that rewrites the stories of men Where a little one becomes a thousand. A little one becomes a thousand. That God will fish helpers from around the nation and bring them to your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
please be seated. An encounter with God gives you confidence, gives you audacity. Do you know why God brings you to a point of encounter? Because the assignment that follows that encounter, only the man who has seen God can do it. If you don't have an encounter with God, you will run away from the assignment he gives you. It will never be in the strength of the flesh for you to achieve divine purposes. No. When God tells you a thing you can do, you most likely had a demon. Because God will tell you something that that version of you cannot do it. Not in the strength of the flesh. He will always tell you what will make you need him to get the job done. Is someone learning? Why would you cut 12 ordinary, untrained people from fishermen and all of that and you want to commit such a mandate to them having never learned anything? Is that a wise leadership strategy? Many of you here are leaders. You've stretched your intelligence. You've been trained by some of the best institutions. Would you carry such a weak? Do you know that in selecting the disciples who would later become apostles, no man assisted Jesus? So you would not say human factors came in. How do you fast all night as the word incarnate and select the kind of weak people Jesus selected? But the question is, was the job done? That is called the wisdom of the just. Sometimes it may not subscribe to logic. But within that weakness is tremendous strength. Are we together? You need an encounter with God. I'm speaking to someone here because after this conference, you should go and buy books. For some of you, after this conference, your retreat starts. Three days with God crying and saying, Lord, don't send me if you are not going to reveal yourself to me. Who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? You are sending me to be a financial apostle, a kingdom entrepreneur. Lord, I don't want to. This is not about money. It's not about buying and selling. Wealth is warfare. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. Wise men get wealth, but strong men retain wealth. It takes beyond creativity to retain wealth. Intelligence, value that is served intelligently can bring you wealth but it takes strength and capacity when you prosper and remain prosperous it's not a product of intelligence again there is strength are we learning let me rush the remaining two and then we're done for tonight but for someone you came here to hear a message that you need an encounter with God the encounter you've had hitherto is not sufficient, I tell you sincerely, not for the assignment God is giving you. You need to go back and cry. I need to know you. You are sending me like Aura Roberts, giving me the healing of anointing to go to the nations. Make sure you stay and know the healer. You will see cases that will rattle your faith. It is the revelation of the healer that will keep you audacious. God is granting you grace to be an intercessor to shift the spiritual climate over nations. You must know God. If not, by the time your consistency in prayer opens you up to visions and you see certain demons and spirits, you will stop praying and literally run for your life and say, this vision is not worth it. Hmm. What is this strange being that I'm seeing? But you need to know the one who has sent you. So you can look at those spirits and say, I come against you. The spirits that have held onto territories and you swing open the gates of territories for the purposes of God to thrive. You need an encounter with God. Number two. The second key. You need faith. Hmm. Becoming a sign and a wonder subscribes to the law of faith. Please someone say the law of faith. Faith is a law. The Bible says so. In addition to having an encounter with the, the God of the Bible, you need faith. 
Four times in scripture, the Bible says that just shall live by faith. To live by faith means you prosper by faith. To live by faith means you go forward by faith. That the entire scope of the believer's experience is faith dependent. Faith dependent. What is faith? Your persuasion, the depth of your conviction about God and the integrity of his person. And then the corresponding action that you take to support that conviction. Faith is beyond believing. Faith is beyond agreeing with God. You can agree with God and yet you're not walking by faith. The proof of faith in one word is obedience. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Not see it, not explain, not want to do it. Whatsoever he says to do, do it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all that I command you this day. To do and observe. Observe and do. Observe and do. Observe and do. Not just listen. Observe and do. It says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. I saw this scripture many years ago and I believed it exalted it was not a parable a man can be exalted such that you are void of shame regardless where you go to provided it is this earth there is honor preserved for you by reason of light exalted above the nations of the earth and that these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you i believe that it says if they are willing and obedient they shall eat the good of the land please hear me there is good in every land but it is faith that delivers your portion. Do you believe that? There is good in Lagos. The increase of the earth is for all. The Bible says even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. That means in this earth, it is not that God decided to bless others and leave others. The increase of the earth is for all. But it takes faith to command your portion. It takes faith to insist on your portion. Are we together now? Jesus queried unbelief many times. He queried unbelief everywhere he saw it. Mark chapter 11 from verse 22, 23, 24, but particularly verse 24. After Jesus cursed the fig tree, they came by the morning and they saw that the tree had been cursed. And Jesus said in verse 22, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire say desire one more time say desire it says when you pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them the just shall live by faith the businessman shall live by faith i learned early in life that there are no guarantees anywhere the pursuit and the passion for guarantee is a waste of time there are no guarantees the strongest of men and systems still fail. There are no guarantees anywhere. You are going to have to trust God sooner or later and jump out of that boat and walk on water. Sometimes you will not even have the encouragement of other apostles, but you are going to have to trust God to walk on water. You want to build that house? There are no guarantees. One day you have to get up and buy, even if it's five bags of cement. That is all you have, but start by faith. Are we together? Faith. Ministry is done by faith. This morning, when the pastors got up, you did not sign on any form that you'll be here by evening. There are no guarantees. It took faith. While they cleaned and organized this place, they knew what God told them about this conference. And it made them to continue even when this place was empty. Now here you are. You see that now? We live in a world that is obsessed with guarantees. Now I'm not saying be careless and be reckless with your life, but believe me, any man who has attained a position of exploit in business, in life, in destiny, they will tell you there were times they honestly broke the rules to rise. It will not always be about quietly, meticulously following the path of least resistance. There are times you have to jump out of that boat. Surprisingly, 
if he's the one who tells you to come, he doesn't allow you to sink. He will defend his name even when you fall. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. He never said, Peter, come. It was to be everybody's experience. But the person who jumped out of the boat was the person who the testimony became around. He never said, Peter, come. If he said, Peter, come, any one of them coming now will be disobedience. But he said, come. He's still telling people to come. He didn't stop with Peter. For some of you, he's been saying, come for years. Come. Come. Rise higher in ministry. Come. Draw closer. I, you can become a greater version of yourself. But many of us are still having the fear of the other apostles. We are in the boat commenting on those who are walking and say, you see, I knew this would have been me. Not realizing that Peter only started sinking. He did not sink. Jesus held his hands. Are we together now? The assignment was to walk on water. Did Peter walk on water? The assignment is to prosper. If he says, come, will you prosper? It doesn't matter how many times you try to sink. When his hand holds you, the most important thing is that the assignment gets done. Are we together? Apostle, but I've tried and tried and tried and tried to have the child. I've done everything. Why don't you trust God again that after this conference, you begin to count your days? He said, Master, we have toiled all night. He didn't bring another sea, didn't bring another boat, the same thing. But he just added his word to it. Nevertheless, that's the factor, add thy word. It is impossible to walk by faith when you are ignorant of the promises of God. You need to know the promises of God, representations of his commitment towards your life and your destiny. Spare me a minute to give you the third key and then we wrap up. But it's important for you to know that you need faith if you must succeed. You need faith to do ministry. You need faith to excel in Nigeria. Come on, Nigerians. Huh? Have you forgotten? There are too many things to remind you in this nation every day that you need faith. All you need to do is to wake up. Nigeria for you. All you need to do is to wake up. And you will find out that there is a reason from, from your first stretch on the bed. You are reminded by everything around you that if you dare throw faith away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, with all due respect, you know how many pastors plunge to depression after COVID? Because for many of them, they had contracts or bills for auditoriums they were paying, and it didn't matter. The people said, well, we are sorry, but COVID affected everybody, including me. The contract still stands as discussed. How about the three months, no church, no service, no offering? Well, go and discuss it with the God who sent you. But as far as this contract is concerned, there are people who never recovered. There are people who plunged into depression. Am I right? There are businesses that went down never to rise up no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming up to me no wall you will keep down lie you will tear down coming up to me no shadow you will light up no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up Coming after me, no wall you won't keep down. There's no wall you won't keep down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Hear me. I rebuke the spirit of fear. For some of you, if you keep giving flimsy excuses, you will never make progress. You will watch others come behind you not to compare. Some of you have been giving excuses from time immemorial. Why have you know I, I need to calculate how I cause fear right now? In the name of Jesus, I cause fear right now. My God has not given you the spirit of fear, 
but of love of power and of a sound mind hear me fountain of life i cause fear the fear of death the fear of sickness the fear of failure i call it by name and i cause it by the god of heaven the righteous is as bold as a lion listen let me challenge you go and register that company after this conference all you have is the money for registration go and register it what do i do next place the cac document on the ground and keep praying every day pray with your pen and paper let me tell you the truth fear is a cancer that has pegged many destinies there are people who fear they fear to their detriment it's better to fail honorably trying than to sit down giving flimsy excuses many of you have watched your vision transferred to people those who had the courage God gave you ideas you kept giving explanation he took it to somebody somewhere and the person began to run like Elijah and that vision has come to pass and you keep biting your finger and I saw this you are not the only one who saw it visions are like rainfall whoever brings out a container receives it are we together last year the Lord gave me an instruction to go and hold a conference in Manchester the largest indoor auditorium theater in the whole of the United Kingdom and that is a risk to hold a conference during a weekday and then the Lord gave me an instruction there he said there is a narrative about the church that I want to correct and because of that you're not going to raise any offering you will not collect any offering we had a workforce of over 2,000 plus five people and he says you will feed every one of them go and preach get that place filled up pay everything do everything and return huh. I wasn't born in UK if you don't have faith you see ba no matter how you make in in Africa we call it mouth you make mouth and all of that you'll be embarrassed to a point that your failure becomes a memorial that every time people want to warn others they say remember this person <laughs> hmm. hallelujah when God brought great glory to his name I remember on my way back I said but God I fear you I fear you I fear you I fear you there is nothing God cannot do oh because I said it you didn't believe okay there is nothing you cannot do maybe if i sing it you'll believe it you cannot do. if you have said it then you will do it you have a track record of keeping your word Hallelujah. So number one, you need an encounter with the God of the Bible if you truly intend to be a sign and a wonder. Number two, you need to understand the law of faith. Faith is predicated upon light, illumination, and awareness of the promises of God. I call them exceeding great and precious promises. Number three, what is the third and final key for tonight? And I want you to be sensitive now as we pray. The third key that will turn anyone to be a sign and a wonder is spiritual empowerment, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. 
Yes, sir. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about like he wants you to go about doing good. Healing all day that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me. Let me tell you the truth. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is more than oil. It's just represented in oil or mantles or whatever it is that you use. Oil does not anoint until the oil is anointed itself. Are we together now? Yes. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the engracing that comes from God. Please listen. Upon a life. It is the empowerment that transits you from a believer to a witness. The empowerment that transits you from a believer to a witness. From one who merely agrees with God to one who demonstrates that God is alive. You become a validator of God's claims when that anointing rests upon you. Now, I'm not because um, I'm just touching on it, but for you to know that there are different levels and there are different dimensions of the anointing. Every level of result in the kingdom is sponsored by the anointing. When you see extraordinary manifestations of the spirit happen, when you see people prosper in the kingdom, there is something called the power to prosper. The power to prosper has nothing to do with money, unfortunately. It's been wrongly understood and even taught. The power to prosper is not a financial anointing, no. The power to prosper is the grace for advancement. That is what makes people go forward. You cannot move forward if you don't have the power to prosper. Finances is only a byproduct. It's a minute fraction of what that anointing was mandated to do. When God wants to help a man, there are three ways he helps that man. Number one, he exposes that man to his mercy. The ministry of mercy is the first way God helps men. Number two, the ministry of men. When God wants to help a man, he sends you men. Every time you are saying, God help me, it's important to know how your answers look like. If you don't know how your answers look like, you will make the mistake they made in Acts chapter 12. They prayed for the release of Peter. Peter was now released. He came and knocked the door. They opened it and shot it at him and kept praying because they didn't know what their answers should look like. You must know what your answer looks like. When you are saying, God, help me in Lagos, how will the answer look like? Mercy. Two, men. Three, the anointing. He helps men by placing something upon their lives that produces godlike dimensions of results. Listen, there is no man who can do these things except God be with him, Nicodemus said. I'm saying this because I'm about to speak over your life. Most of you, you've prayed, you've fasted, you've said, Lord, take me to a higher realm. Can I tell you, yesterday's anointing cannot produce today's results. You will need to be empowered again and again. Here's how it works. Thou anointest my head with oil. Watch this now. But my cup runneth over. He does not anoint the cup. You only use the cup to verify what is on your head. Thou anointest my head with oil. The ministry runs over. The business runs over. So when the cup is failing, don't blame the cup. The cup is failing because the head is empty. Believe what you are hearing. There are various kinds of anointings. There is an anointing for influence. You can be as vocal and as intelligent as you are. A generation will not hear you until that anointing is upon you. I call it the hear ye him anointing. But when it comes... God will raise men from anywhere to anywhere to hearken to you. There is the grace for speed. 
that gives men acceleration in life because the most expensive commodity on earth according to scripture from a human standpoint is time and the moment time is against you you are already in trouble destiny is measured as a function of time so there are two remedies when time is against you one is called speed two is called restoration and when God wants to really help you he brings both are we together you know what it means to give speed much is accomplished per unit time that's speed you know what it means to restore to take the events that you missed and bring them into your future or you think God cannot do that so the helper who would have helped you last year but because of insensitivity God reprograms it again when you watch a movie technology has been able to help us understand how restoration is so you're watching a movie and you had to rush to use the restroom by the time you're back something has passed you but there is an ability to go back now it is not the time the time has gone physically but you can reschedule that event again hallelujah let me tell you the truth and I submit to you fountain of life one of the greatest secrets in my life and the life of any great man I know in the kingdom is the privilege of being genuinely anointed you are not going to be a blessing if you are not anointed your real ordination is the anointing did you hear what I said your real ordination to ordain means to legitimize your operation your real ordination is the anointing you cannot do the work of God without the anointing you can sing but you cannot bless till you are anointed are we together you can preach articulately so intelligently so but you will be surprised that what you are preaching regardless the value it keeps falling on deaf ears void of potency and the power to transform the missing ingredient is not knowledge is that that ingracing is not there there are people you need the anointing to do business and to excel in it there is an anointing that helps you excel in the marketplace it works like a charm you can see someone and know by that anointing that this guy is worth my partnership he will be great tomorrow there are no guarantees it's a knowing sponsored by that anointing people have called it all kinds of names but the Bible calls it the anointing there is a grace for wisdom wisdom beyond your age you will run an organization like 30 people in one when that grace comes upon you are we together now so that when we begin to pray my apologies I know I've stretched you but even if it's just a minute don't look at the areas in your life that are not working it tells you where the anointing is deficient so that you cry with intelligence are we together there is a cry that is with intelligence the cry of blind Bartimeo thou son of David have mercy on me there is a cry that is mere lamentation that does not call for help but there is a cry with intelligence Lord you have helped me but this area of finances why is it not opening up don't give excuses this area of favor you've called me to be an intercessor but the moment I begin to pray after five minutes I'm yawning myself to sleep there's something that needs to quicken you and come upon you are we together I open up the Bible to study and I'm sleeping but when I close it I can be on social media or on my call for a long time something is wrong but I'm praying for someone tonight something you didn't enter this building with will live with you you didn't hear what I said that when you were leaving home you came like Saul when Saul left his father's house he didn't carry the anointing he went back with but when he met Samuel Samuel said is it not because God has ordained you listen 
I like what Samuel told Saul. I think that's where we'll end this meeting with. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you not to be king, to be captain over his inheritance? Captain over his inheritance. You need to know what God has first to know when he makes you captain. The cattle on a thousand hill belongs to the Lord. The earth itself is the Lord. When God makes you captain over his inheritance, you are captain over his resources. You are captain over, this is beyond being a king. Samuel said, I will tell you why I'm anointed. I'm anointing you. The Lord has made you captain over his inheritance. Captain over his inheritance. Captain over his resources. Captain over his program. You are going to pray one prayer. Father, the kind of encounter I need to be a sign and a wonder, let it rest upon me now. Go ahead and pray with power. In the next one minute, pray, pray. Cry from the depth of your heart. The grace for favor, pray. The grace for speed. The grace for restoration. Someone pray that every area of your life where you've not seen the glory of God manifest, you can pray. And even if you've seen the glory of God in that area, it can be from glory to glory. From glory to glory. If Jesus increased, you can increase. If Jesus increased in wisdom, you can increase in wisdom. If Jesus increased in stature, you can increase in stature if Jesus increase in favor my life by this anointing must become a manifestation of the glory of God In Jesus name we pray hallelujah do you believe in prophecy can I speak over your life you see the prophetic has been abused to a point that the life and the power that comes from it is no longer seen unfortunately and sadly and I know God is helping his body on that wise but let me tell you the truth there are certain realms in the spirit you can never enter until the prophetic comes to midwife your journey as powerful as Jesus was when he walked upon the earth three prophets had to play a role in his life otherwise he would not rise number one was Simeon the prophet number two was Anna the prophetess number three was John the Baptist himself otherwise Jesus would have failed as Jesus the word incarnate among the many factors that control results in this kingdom is the power of the prophetic. The prophetic can recalibrate climates. And you believe me when I say that. Recalibrate climates. There are two dimensions to the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic where God reveals details about your life, brings edification, comfort, builds your faith and gives you direction. But the more superior dimension to the prophetic is the creative dimension. It makes things to happen that had no business happening. When the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing what would have happened anyway. No, no. He made it happen. So the creative dimension of the prophetic scans events that are consistent with the will of God and with the creativity of a movie director, he picks those events and makes them manifest in your life. That means on your way out from this church, you were not supposed to meet a destiny helper. 
but the prophetic can come upon your life listen to me believe what you are hearing it can place someone on the road who has no business going there so when God says I'm going to lift you you see what happens is that the spirit of wisdom moves in honor to that prophecy if it is of God and begins to source for the human actors that must participate with prophecy to make it happen now men of their own accord can reject that prophetic word it will keep scanning around Lagos until it finds a man and then it positions that man and acts out the manifestation of that prophecy I pray for you in the name that is above all names every door that has been closed over your life I stand by the God who has called me and I speak to that door fountain of life that door opens now 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 everything upon your life that represents witchcraft and the activity of darkness manipulations of familiar spirits orchestrations of dark powers I come in the name of the Lord and by the agency of the blood I decree and declare that spiritual climate is shifted over your life that climate is shifted over your life shifted over your family shifted over your life shifted over your family shifted over your life in this kingdom hear me believers who hates you does not matter don't worry about who hates you but who likes you that is the person you should be concerned about are we together if you are Esther don't worry about her man your concern should be Ahasuerus that is the one who can make you king and that is the one who can remove you in the name of Jesus everyone ordained to be a helper by God who is yet to show up in your life by the power of prophecy I compel them to show up in your life I compel them to show up in your life show up in your business show up in your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ you have lost relationships help those under the anointing you have lost money you have lost many things but restoration is a possibility I want to place something upon your head in the name of Jesus I prophesy over you between now and the end of May I call upon the God of heaven that everything you have lost right from last year into this year you have the faith to believe it I declare restore 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 in the name of Jesus hallelujah let me speak over those trusting God for a job one time Jesus sent people he gave a parable to look for men to go and walk in the vineyard he met others who agreed for a denary later on he was still looking for people and there were some unemployed people and he said why sittest thou idle he said no man employs us and immediately he spoke there was a there was something for them to do I pray for you your space in this Lagos or in Nigeria or in Africa or in any nation of the world I push you by prophecy to that space I push you by prophecy to that space in the name of Jesus
fountain of life hear the word of the Lord you are stepping into your season of laughter I want you to write it down I'm saying it to you by the Spirit of the Living God Sarah said and all those who hear this will laugh with me this is what the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you and in the name that is above all names the grace that backs that prophetic word I release it upon you laughter in your homes laughter in your job laughter in this church for the Bible says though weeping endures for, but for the moment and even with the night it says but joy I prophesy to you enter your season of laughter testimonies upon testimonies God will turn your life around turn your life around turn your destinies around in the name of Jesus and every force that has found that you must cry and remain crying as a family as individuals I curse it right now again I repeat step into your season of laughter Please stand. Let's stand. Laughter is connected to victory. You don't laugh during trainings. Laughter is also connected to completion. You go and investigate the meaning of laughter. Laughter, like tongues, is a mystery. That is the reason why even babies laugh. They have no knowledge, yet they laugh because it's a mystery. Sarah cried for many years but she laughed when Isaac came that means laughter is also associated with the birthing of new things new visions children barring people who have not carried children will stand on this altar and celebrate twins and triplets so shall it be in Jesus name before I make the altar call I agree with every servant of God here following online and the fathers over this commission by the privilege of God's grace and through the ministry of intercession we pray that the fountain of life will not go down We pray for the entire pastorate, Pastor Jimmy, Pastor Toto, and the eldership, that the mercies of the God of David. God had a covenant with David that you will never lack someone upon this throne. In the name of Jesus, we reenact that covenant upon this church. For the sake of the many years of labor, sacrifice, and investment in the gospel, we pray like the covenant Solomon had when the Jerusalem temple was being dedicated, may God always find a people from this church. In Jesus' name. You need Jesus. Please all stand. You need Jesus. More than church, you need Jesus more than the sermon of a preacher there are many thousands of people scattered across the balcony thousands others following online the reason why we do this is not just out of church and religiosity it is that that is the protocol for any life of victory your encounter begins with jesus we are only midwives we are ushers and there's someone who came to church tonight and whilst you heard me speak the Spirit of God deep began to call on to deep and the Spirit of God began to tell you you were born for a reason there's more to your life than just survival there's more to your life than coming to church today and going back attempting to be serious with God or otherwise some of you were invited you just came I'm going to make an altar call two calls in one number one for somebody in this place who is saying apostle on hearing you i have come to a realization that i need jesus beyond religion 
beyond pretense or number two someone is saying I need to rededicate my life I'm tired of playing games I want to mean it with Jesus give me the honor of leading you to Jesus as my last function here wherever you are I'm going to count one to five unashamedly leave your seat and please let me request that you come and stand right before me here I begin my counting now one if you're coming come fountain of life are you celebrating salvation two come on Christ the solid rock I stand all around come mean business with Jesus one more time on Christ the solid rock three I count five and I begin to pray clapping let's encourage them as they come come young and old learned and unlearned come he wants to give you a new beginning hallelujah thank you Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to me very carefully. My Bible, your Bible says, for God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his then only begotten son, that whosoever, this blessing is for whosoever. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. This is why he brought us here. If this were the only miracle, it would still be the greatest. The greatest. Listen to me. By your coming forward tonight, you are agreeing with myself and the great servants of God in this church that number one, you have seen the need for Jesus above and beyond any other thing in your life and that you are of your own accord and by your own willingness, you're ready to surrender your life totally and truly, void of pretense, void of religion, if that is true and that is you, please may I request you lift your right hand as high as you can as a sign of surrender. I know you are crying, but don't be ashamed of your tears. You are with him. He loves you. Mm. He said, I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly. Say after me as loud and as clear as you can. Lord Jesus. Jesus. One more time, say it again. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I'm a child of God I go from glory to glory amen Father, thank you for these precious ones. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I decree and declare on account of your confession and by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The grace to live the victorious Christian life, let it be imparted upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Okay, so here's what I want you to do for me, all of you. Thank you very much for your courage. There's a sister waving her hands. In fact, they're a group of counselors. I'm going to please request that all of you in concert, just follow that sister as she leads you. There'll be a group of people who have a word with you very quickly as we clap for you, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go.
Is that the best you can do? Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Don't stop. That's how people will clap for you. That is how you will celebrate your testimonies. In Jesus' name we pray. Pastor Jimmy, Pastor Tolu, the entire Fountain of Life, thank you very much. May God bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.